All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to go back and uh, read some things here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, first, let, let's just go ahead and start at uh, verse 14. Now we exhort you. That means that we're going to do everything to encourage you and everything like that. We're not going to teach on these. We already have. If you were not here, go back on Wednesdays. Find a date on Wednesdays, and uh, you can see how we broke this down. Now we therefore... We exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly. Thank God we have none of those here. Comfort the feeble-minded. Thank God we have none of those here. Uphold the weak. We got them all delivered tonight. Amen? Amen. Be patient with all. Maybe we need to work on some of that. But uh, we're going to make it. See that no one render evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. How many knows that's one of the, that's a challenge. When there's times you don't want to rejoice, you rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. That means having a heart attitude and attitude of prayer. In everything, in, in, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. I just admonished someone this week. Uh, I'll never make light of people going through things. But the truth is, we have to still obey the Bible and in everything still give thanks and rejoice, don't we? We have to do that. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit. 20, do not despise prophecies. 21, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of every appearance of evil. Now, we started uh, last Wednesday. We went from 22 to 21. And I said I wanted to go backwards because tonight I want to deal with this thing. Do not quench, do not quench the spirit of God. Do not quench. Uh, Quench, uh, to put out, to extinguish, to smother, to stifle. The spirit. Whatever you do, don't do something to quench the spirit of God. We have to walk with an open heaven in our life so that we're able to continue to receive from God. What the enemy wants people to do is start believing a lie of the enemy that says God will not come through for you. See, there's something about the way the the enemy is programmed when he was cast out. He really believes that if he puts enough pressure on people, they'll turn from God and go back to his system. He believes that. That's why he keeps putting pressure because he believes if he keeps applying enough pressure, you will ignore God because you'll lose trust and faith in God and you'll return back to what Galatians says, a more weak and beggarly elements of this world. But when he knows the resolve inside of you, then that's what puts the brakes on. You have to have resolve in the walk with God. You've got to know. Everybody has to know. I said this once, and people, not a lot of people, but there's always a few people that are still stuck in the state of religion, being religious-minded. I made the statement that I will never walk away from my God. And I could hear the air, you know, just exit from the room of people going, I would never say that. Well, you better start saying it. I said, I will never walk away from my God. I will never cheat on my God. I'll never cheat on my woman. I will not cheat on my kids. I will not cheat on my grandkids. And I will not cheat on this church. I said, I won't won't walk away from God. Nobody can say they never will. Never say never. Never! Never! Well, how do you know? Because I'm not going to leave my God. You got to make a decision. There's got to be resolve. I do not walk away from my God. Well, I wouldn't say that the devil will hear you. Never! So, somebody wake him up in case he's asleep. Let him hear you. Never! Come on. Come on. I've watched people who's never been born again stay faithfully married for, for, for 70 years. 
If people can stay faithfully married because they commit to one another, surely you that are born again, spirit-filled, has the life of God in you, can make it. Can make it. Say with me, never. Never. You will never turn on your God. You will never cheat on your God. Amen. Hallelujah. I said this to more than one, one girl going out on a date. I said, whatever you do, just take your Bible and lay it between you and him. Because he'll have to climb over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get to you. (laughs) Come on. One of them are bound to stop him. (laughs) But you don't give place to the devil. And that's what we're going to look at. Go, Go back to Ephesians. Not back as if you were there. But turn back to Ephesians. If not, my, it's one of my favorite books. Ephesians chapter 4. I mean, sorry, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter, no, I was right. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm I'm on chapter 4, but it still shows 5. Ephesians chapter 4. All right. I am sure. I think. <laughs> Verse 25. I knew there's a five in there somewhere. Therefore, put in away lying. Woo-hoo. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Is it possible, Pastor, to to be angry and not sin? Sure. Like I said before, if you get upset, just don't start cussing. I ask people that hit their, I said this not long ago, that hits their fingers or whatever or gets upset, somebody pulls on from them. I just say, did you cuss? Well, no, Pastor, I didn't cuss. There was a... uh, a person that came to me one day that he was just down in his, just down in his mouth, you know. Woe is me. You ever had anybody do that to you? Have you ever done that to somebody? I'm sorry. Woe is me. Woe is me. And whining and crying. I mean, no, I'm talking about somebody's been in church. I'm not talking about somebody just got born again. Usually those who just got born again, they're still working on some, they're still working on spiritual uh, energy. But this person's been in church. I just don't believe God hears me, Tim. I just don't believe he says. I just don't know. God just won't hear me. I don't know why God doesn't hear me. And I just don't know. I said, uh, what? God said he'll always hear I know, but he's just not hearing me. So I stopped him. I said, all right. I want you to do something for me. He said, what's that? I said, uh, I want you to begin to cuss. He looked at me. I said, come on, cuss. Cuss big. Cuss real big. He looked at me like stoned, man. Like, what do you mean? I said, well, well, come on. No. Well, God will hear me. Ding, ding. Come on. You know, it's so simple that people don't get it. It's amazing if, if he, he knew in his mind that if I start cussing, God would hear me. But he's crying out as the righteousness of God, and he's convinced God doesn't hear him. Come on, he hears every prayer. He hears every cry. Thank God he didn't start cussing. I'd have been shocked if he did. I knew he wouldn't. You got to know who to say that to. Some people are looking for a reason. (laughs) There ain't nothing spiritual about this part of the service yet, but we're going to get there. (laughs) Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Say, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. I'm going to, give, I'm going to give you a verse on this. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. One of my favorite verses, this was the time that Jesus 
was, you know, he was in his last week. This is the last supper. This is the words he was sharing with his disciples because we know it's after chapter 13 of the book of John. Chapter 14, verse 30. He said, I, he said, I will not talk. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, uh, well, let's just turn there. I want you to mark it. You highlight it. Uh, John 14, 30. Uh, this is something for you to highlight. I, I printed off my notes, but uh, you, you need to mark it. And if you don't write in your Bible, write in your husband's or your wife's. And uh, uh, <laughs> just don't lose this. John 14, 30. He said, I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. And he has nothing in me. That means, in essence... There's a lot into this, but you know what he's saying? I may die, but he has nothing to hold me in that grave. He has nothing to hold me in that grave. He who knew no sin became sin. He didn't commit sin. There was nothing in Jesus that the enemy could attach himself to. Come on, isn't that powerful? Jesus knew that I'm going to go, I'm going to give my life, I'm going to drink from this cup, and the devil has nothing in me. He had, there's nothing in me that's going to keep me from rising victorious Amen. and being the redeemer of the world. And when I read that verse back in Ephesians and give no place to the devil, I don't want to give the enemy one thing, to have one thing in me that he can take a carabiner or something and attach himself to me. And he says, I'm going to torment you because you give me the right to. No. You examine your life and you say he found there's nothing in me. He finds nothing in me. Now the enemy is going to attack. I told Chris the other, I told Chris Monday night, I'm, I bear witness. And nobody preaching this pulpit more than me. And I'm telling you what. Every month, sometime at least once in a week of the sermons, I deal with warfare all the way home. It doesn't matter how long you've been preaching. The enemy still tries to attack. And uh, I said, we, when you think you mess up, oh my goodness. It's really attack. Sometimes the attack is tough enough when you know you, that you did well. Am I right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The enemy don't want you to enjoy anything with God. That's why joy is so important. Let me read it out, out of this translation. He said, I will not talk with you much more. For the prince, evil genius, ruler... Of this world is coming. And he has no claim on me. Glory to God. He has no claim on me. Oh, that just does something to my spirit. He has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. And he has no power over me. Now, glory to God. That, 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 that almost make a mummy shout, wouldn't it? I'm telling you, there is something in that that is so powerful. I'm, I'm going to read this again. Not for your benefit, but for mine. I even copied it in red because he said it. I will not talk with you much more. That means because I'm getting ready to go away. For the prince, evil genius, the ruler of this world is coming. And he has no claim on me. Lift a hand and say he has no claim on me. Say, I've already been claimed. Hallelujah. He has no claim on me. There is nothing. He has no claim on me. He has nothing in common with me. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. I give no place to the devil. There is nothing in me that belongs to him. Everything I have is his. Everything I have is his. Why? Because I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. A great price. A great price. And he has no power over me. So when I read verse 27, I can't just read verse 27. I have to reminisce. 
that he's so defeated and we're so victorious. And I give no place, neither give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, steal no longer. I don't, I've seen a couple people change the comma there. Let him that stole steal no longer working with his hands. <laughs> no, it's just, I'm just, some of you didn't even get it, did you? I, I told people, you can make the Bible say anything you want to say. The Bible says, let him that stole steal no, no more, no longer, comma, but rather working with his hands. I said, some people think it says, let him that stole steal, comma, no longer working with his hands. I guess not everything I say is palatable. But anyway, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands that which is good, and he, that he may have something to give him who has need. Oh, so is there something wrong with working? No, no. Those who don't, those who don't work, the Bible says, don't eat. Those who don't work, don't eat. Verse 29, let no corrupt word or communication proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for, necess for, for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearer. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, I'm going to say I'm going to talk about do not grieve the Spirit. And we finally got down to it and reading this, but there's too much before that to not say something. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, folks, if you could take a section of scriptures and live by it, this is a good section. This section here will keep you free. It will keep you free in this. So, so when you're looking at this, do not quench the spirit of God. Do, do not quench the spirit of God. Uh, make sure that you know that uh, you do not Offend the one who has sealed you, who has sealed you. You know, I've been in places to where the spirit of God began to move and people begin to act, you know, uh, what word I want to use, um, disrespectful. And I've watched the anointing of God leave right out of the building. I've watched the anointing of God leave right out of the building. Folks, we can't afford for the presence of God to fade out of the house. Amen. We have to be able to stay strong. Yes. I will not deny my God before men because I do not want to be denied in heaven. Amen. I'm not going to deny God. I'm not ashamed of God. Paul said I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, not only to the Jew, but also to the Gentile. I realize when you know, I, I, I've been to some old-fashioned Pentecostal churches. Old-fashioned Pentecostal churches. And uh, uh, it's a little different than us sometimes. And, and as one of the church, you know, I went to, uh, it didn't have a real good reputation. This was, this was in another state. It didn't have a real good reputation. And, and people said, where do you go to church at? So I said it real fast. Oh, what do you believe, Pentecostal? Uh, what, what are you Baptist? I'm Pentecostal. Because it was like, when you looked at it being Pentecostal, people looked at you like you were not all there. Because they based everything on tongues. And that's why I started asking people years ago, why, why do you speak in tongues? And it's the number one answer. It's almost like family feud. And the number one answer is, because I'm Pentecostal. And come to find out, I don't speak in tongues that I'm Pentecostal. They classify me as a Pentecostal 
because I had an upper room experience that God intended for the Jews that spread to the Gentiles. I tell people, Pentecost didn't start in Kentucky. Pentecost started in an upper room in Jerusalem. Amen. It did not. I'm sorry, some of you just got a revelation. <laughs> but it did not start south of the river. It didn't start hymns in the hills. It started with Jewish music on the day of Pentecost in Israel and it spread around the world. It's the fastest growing move in the world. You ought to clap for victory on that. It is. It's the fastest growing. And these other nations, Pentecostalism is the fastest growing. Even the Baptists, even the, even the people that are not have Pentecostal in their name are spirit filled. I'm telling you what, it is, it's one of the most joyful things you can do and to walk in life that I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when you look at this, how in the world could someone grieve the Spirit of God? Now, Thessalonians said it this way. I'm going to go back and read it out of that, and I'm going to come back and read it this. And But according to the clock, it's telling me that I have to pick up next time. Uh, but it says here, do not quench the Spirit. And in, in, the, in Thessalonians, but Ephesians says, it says here, do not grieve. So do not quench. Do not quench. To quench something, that means to, uh, uh, to put out, to, to, to extinguish, uh, to smother. Or so if you have a fire and you smother out the fire, you're going camping and you know you got to leave, you smother it out. You lay something on it. You put it out. And what it's saying is do not do something that causes it to cease. To cause it to cease. But at the same token, just a lot of, just a lot of uh, uh, emotion doesn't mean that he's even greater because he's inside of you. Amen? I, I, I talk to people that, uh, and I realized that we used it. This was years ago. I must have been just a young preacher in my 20s. And uh, that wasn't that long ago. I made it sound like it was forever. Years ago. Uh, but... Uh, they uh, went to church, and uh, the church barely exists today. It's sad, but uh, I talked to him. I was just with Dad as his assistant uh, pastor, and I said, uh, well, how'd the service go? Oh, well, I said, what is, what's so-and-so? I don't want to mention the pastor's name. Some of you may have heard of him. I, I want to pass the preach on day. Oh, there ain't no preaching. The Holy Ghost took over. I said, oh, praise God. I asked him again, what will... What, what's he preaching? He ain't, we, ain't, we ain't have him preaching. The Holy Ghost has taken over. And it went that way forever. And so I asked him one day, I said, has the Holy Ghost ever taken over in the Word? Because it's almost like when the Holy Ghost takes over. <laughs> Come on. I feel like I need to, the way you're staring at me, I don't know. I believe the Holy Ghost can take over in this as well. Whatever we do, we don't quench him. If he's moving like we had before the prayer, we let him move. If he's moving in the word, we let him move. Amen. If I'm in a flow, let me preach that hour, an hour and a half, two. No. No. Don't throw that blanket on it. But I ask, has he ever taken over in the word? Because faith comes by hearing. And uh, I love the move of the spirit. But I love the word of God. I love the prayer in the altars. I love to see the power of God on people. But I love the word of God. Amen. I don't want to quench. I don't want to smother. I don't want to extinguish. I don't want to stifle the spirit of God in anything. Amen. So, you know, when God's moving, the reverence and respect in the house of God is so important. The reverence and respect in the house of God is so important. Uh, it's almost rude if someone's talking to you and you get up and walk away. Amen. Now, cell phones is very dangerous nowadays. Somebody can be pouring their heart out to you and your phone rings and that takes place over somebody's heart. How many knows that grieves that person's heart? 
don't get into prayer and you really need to pray. Now, if you're just, you know, pray without ceasing, you got an attitude of prayer and you take a phone call, you take a phone call. But if you're serious about getting into the presence of God, uh, you turn that thing off. You communicate with God. You're not going to be in there forever. Communicate with God. Then turn that on. It's like Angel called me today, but I was talking to the pastor. There's this button that says you can push it and it's got presets. I'm on the other line. I'll call you back. Now, I've taken her call before, but this was a different conversation. If I would have told him to hang on in the conversation we were having, it would have bugged him because he was pouring his heart. We were doing our, it was a heart thing. It was a heart thing. So the point is, I'd rather somebody be disappointed I didn't take their call. And then this point, the father. Because it was, I took something more important than him. So there's something serious about don't grieve. Don't smother. Don't stifle. Don't extinguish the things of God. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more about this. I'm going to talk about being sensitive. Uh, Next uh, Wednesday, I'm going to talk about being sensitive. I'm going to talk about how to keep a sensitive heart, how to develop a heart of sensitivity, because I believe the more we develop a heart of sensitivity, the further we're going to go with God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want God to have to take a hammer, hit me over the head because he's trying to get my attention. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Let's stand.